to my second winner, and that is the Titans with an absolute mammoth win against the Colts in the division. And for me, that's put them right into the Super Bowl contention. Upset and, of the week, mate. Who have you got here? Yep. So this was out of two for me, and I, but I've gone with um, the Niners to beat yeah, the Bills. Yeah, baby. We are hardcore on the Niners train. Choo-choo. It's in San Fran. <laughs> Welcome back to the On The Ball Podcast. This is episode 90 of the show. Once again, joined by Christian Pilcher. How are you, mate? Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm actually very well. We've both dusted off our uni exams, so there's going to be a lot more creative podcast content coming out in the next few weeks and months but for now we're back to our staple our our meat and veg as i called it last week our week 12 fantasy well not fantasy sorry that's tomorrow's episode but our week 12 nfl review we'll be going through talking about the winners and the losers from the from the weekend's action discuss who's now in our playoff picture we'll give out some awards and we'll also have a quick look ahead to week 13 even though week 12 hasn't finished because we are filming this before the Pittsburgh-Baltimore game. So without further ado, do you want to get into it, mate, with your first winner of the week? Let's go, mate. My first winner of the week is the G-Men, purely purely because for the first time they're top of the NFC East with a – with a pretty average win over the Bengals, it has to be said, but Danny Jones did go down injured um, in the third quarter, I believe. But either way, good win, and now they're in pole position, in my opinion, to take out the uh, NFC East. Yeah, they are. They are the favourites to take it out now. The really? prediction model that I I don't know oh, about yeah. the betting markets, but the prediction model I like to look at <laughs> um, five thirty eight for those interested. That's the website name. Yeah, they have the Giants at. 35% chance of winning the division now. So and yeah, what that's is an the, interesting one. What's the football team at? I think they're 27, the Eagles are 23, <sighs> and the Cowboys are 10%. And because we're – actually, no, we'll, I'll talk about the Cowboys next. They're my first loser. But the Giants, do you think they could – if they do get there, do you think they could win a game in the playoffs or do you think – No. <laughs> <laughs> well, nah. Like very unlikely. They do have a good uh, defense, though. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they would get smashed. I think. Yeah, I think most of the teams, even though it's a pretty bad division, the Eagles, Washington, and the Giants, they all have solid defenses, if not good defenses. So I don't think there would be like a forty-point blowout or anything. Don't think it would be an embarrassing yeah. loss to whoever gets there. But yeah, going to be interesting to see how they go. Hopefully, Daniel Jones's hamstrings all right because. You know, it's a very tight race, so you don't want him to miss any time at all, even if it is just one week. So that's going to be big to see how he pulls up from that injury. Uh, but, yeah, it, definitely a good win from the Giants, even though it was just scraping the bottom of the barrel in terms of beating a Joe Burrowless um, Bengals. But a win's a win in that division, and you take what you get. So yeah, they're, they're well and truly on their way to it. And actually, no. We'll start with my – oh, no, Washington are my winner. I'll forget forget that. I was going to put them in my winners, but I think I had them last week, so I thought I'd leave them out this week. But another team that was in my winners last week, but are now my losers, the Dallas Cowboys in the exact same division as the New York Giants, vying out for that NFC title. But they got pumped and dumped by the Washington football team. They got absolutely destroyed on Thanksgiving Thursday night football. Um, in the space of a week, they went from NFC East contenders to outside chances. Everyone was up and about after their win against the Vikings, thought they'd turn the corner, including myself. I had them in my playoff bracket last week, and now um, that model I mentioned before is, ha- says they're only at a 10% chance, um, so well and truly a long way off, in, according to them. And, yeah, I can't really disagree with them there. Washington absolutely destroyed them on the ground, ran for 182 yards, which is pretty much the exact same thing as what they did last time. So 
interesting that they let it happen again. Like I know it's not something you can really short fix in the short term if your run defense is no good, but yeah, disappointing from Dallas that they couldn't at least put up a bit better fight this time. But Washington's defensive front, um, led by Chase Young and Montez Sweat and their run game, it, it's just really not a good matchup for the Cowboys. So that probably explains the uh, Washington sweep in this series. But yeah, pretty poor from the Cowboys. They're going to have to beat the Eagles and the Giants, I reckon, to stand a chance um, at this stage. And that's probably not looking likely. Um, unless they produce an upset against the Ravens or 49ers because they're going to have to get their wins from somewhere and there's not many weeks to go now. So, yeah, for me, the Cowboys are the biggest loser. Um, well, the most clear cut because they've now left my playoff bracket by a pretty long way. So they're my first loser of the week. Um, yep. Any? Do you have any, any other NFC East teams to talk about or do you want to start with the new winner? No, well, the Cowboys were also my biggest losers of the week as well. Yeah, I'll move on to my second winner, and that is the Titans with an absolute mammoth win against the Colts in the division. And for me, that's put them right into the Super Bowl contention and the third seed in the NFC, I reckon. Huge staple win. Derrick Henry looked absolutely unstoppable. And as they say, post-Thanksgiving is Derrick Henry season, I think, after Thanksgiving last year, he was putting up 200 yards a game and he's probably going to do the exact same this year. So look out for the Titans. Yeah, they're my biggest winner of the week as well. Do you reckon they are, if they finish in the third seed behind the Chiefs and the Steelers, do you reckon they would be the third favourite to win the Super Bowl? Like, do you think that low of the NFC teams or are you not quite? No, nah, I reckon I reckon they'll be fourth. I reckon they'll put the, the one seed of the NFC just because yeah. they get a buy and all that. Yeah, that is true. Um, but yeah, pump the Colts, which is pretty impressive considering only two weeks ago, they got pumped by the Colts and yeah, putting up 45 points against what is rumored to be one of the best defenses in the league stats actually kind of argue with that. But um, Derek Henry, AJ Brown, Ryan Tannehill, all, all smashed it, contributed to the six touchdowns, all, all between them, with Tanners running in one. And they have taken the lead over the Colts in that division. And I was looking at their remaining stretches, and the Titans is far easier than the Colts. So they're kind of yeah. looking unstoppable. But the Titans this year, every second week, they look unstoppable. And then the, in the off weeks, they lose a weird game. So that's um, true. Maybe don't quite put them up into the Chiefs Steelers conversation just yet, but definitely putting up um, performances worthy to be in that conversation. So, do you reckon yeah, a huge um, win from the Titans? Who do you reckon? Do you reckon the Titans this year are better than the Titans last year? That's a tough I one think, because they had a better defense last year. I seem to remember. Yeah. But I, I think, think they're actually a better team. But like last year, they just got hot. So I reckon at the point of playoffs at last, in last year, they were probably just better. But I think overall, this team is probably actually better. Just with yeah. like, but yeah. They've definitely, know. their offense has definitely improved, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. But as you said, the defense probably needs to get a little bit closer to what it was last year if they're yeah. going to um, challenge for the Super Bowl. Um, but yeah, the Colts, they're not worthy of being a loser just for me. But um, my next winner, I'm huge on this team after this week, but the I'll talk about them all throughout the episode in pretty much every section. But the 49ers, they beat the Red Hot Rams. They are my second winner of the week behind the Titans. Um, their offense just looked rejuvenated with all the injured players returning. Mullins, um, most and Jeff Wilson came back as well as Debo Samuel all had great games. Um, Mullins is starting to steer the ship fairly solidly, even though he didn't have ridiculous numbers on the weekend. Um, to think about the fact that it was against the Rams makes it look like a pretty good performance from him. Their defense is improving week after week as players who probably weren't expecting much time because of um, depth chart are now starting to get used to their role as starters due to injuries to like Nick Bosa and stuff. Um, Richard Sherman also returned and he played really well mainly um, tagging Cooper Cup out of the game. Also, 
I think he might have had an interception. I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, they're back into the wild card picture for me this week. Um, every every time they get a player back from injury, they look even better. So they're currently fourth in the wild card picture. So just sitting out of the the three. However, I do have to say there are still some rumors that they are going to add an eighth wild card, um, like an eighth spot in the playoffs. So a fourth wild card because um, they want to allow for teams that have like been dogged by COVID if they have to push more games back and stuff like that. But for now, we'll treat it as if there's only three wild cards. But yeah, they have an easier schedule than the Cardinals as well, who are likely going to be their main competitors in terms of that third wild card spot because we would probably assume that the Rams and the Bucks are going to take out the fifth and the sixth if they don't win their divisions. So yep. yeah, at the moment, the 49ers looking like they're going to take it over the Colts. Um, how how big on are you on the 49ers or do you think this was just a, a fluke win? Yeah, no, um, I agree with you. And they're starting to get players back. I think George Kittle might only be like two weeks away apparently. If not, he's they're saying he's probably definitely going to play at least two games. So if they if they make the playoffs, I reckon they'll actually be a threat. But um, yeah, that that ties into my other loser, which is the Cardinals. A bit of a shock loss, shock upset by the Patriots, and that loss has hurt them a lot because the Niners um, beat the Rams. So yeah, the Cardinals, I'd probably have them fourth as well going forward in yeah. that division. Yeah, it's pretty outrageous how quickly the tide has turned in that NFC West. Yeah. Like two weeks ago, we would have been ruling out the 49ers. Um, we had huge questions over the Seahawks, and now pretty much everyone has the Seahawks locked in to win the division, and people are starting to say the Cardinals might not even make it, um, which we'll talk about later in our predicted playoff bracket. But yeah, pretty disgusting loss to the Patriots. Like They're, they're starting to gather quite a few scalps, the Patriots, this year, but I don't know if it's because they're playing great football. I think it might just be a bit of a coincidence that they've come up against some sides playing bad football against them, if I'm honest. But yeah, it looks like Ky- Kyler Murray's shoulder injury is really hampering the team. Um, I talked about it last week, but he only had five rushes um, as he did last week, and they that is his lowest um, amount of carries in a game all season. He's been having like 12, 11, 8 carries a game and back-to-back weeks of five. So it definitely looks like, unless it's just a fluke, it does look like they are worried about his shoulder and him getting hit. So he's going to be running less, which all of a sudden, yes, he's a competent quarterback in the air, but he's nothing. He's not an Aaron Rodgers or a Patrick Mahomes. So all of a sudden, their ability on offense really like diminishes. So they've yeah. also had their... As, as well as those low rush tallies from Kyler, they've also had their two lowest point totals of the season in the last fortnight. So they scored 21 against the Seahawks and then 17 against the Patriots. And out of all the NFC wildcard candidates, so across all the divisions, they have the hardest remaining schedule. So, yeah, it's not looking good for the Cardinals at the moment. Uh, a lot of just bad juju has been coming their way in the last two weeks. So... Yeah, it's pretty funny how quickly the tide has turned, but all of a sudden they're not looking too good for the playoffs anymore after looking like ch- genuine chances to win the division. So, yeah, I'm not willing to rule them out just yet, but huge danger signs in um, Arizona. So, yep. yeah, not, not looking good for them. So I agree with you there that they are a big loser. Uh, my final winner is a bit of a dual thing, but it's the interim coaches. They've actually, I think they've been going under the radar. So this is Raheem Morris, the Atlanta Falcons coach, and Romeo Cronell of Houston. They've actually been doing pretty well since they've taken over their jobs. So we'll start with Atlanta, who had a massive 43-6 to win over the Las Vegas Raiders. Probably shock of the week, I'd say, next to that Patriots victory over the Cardinals. Yep. So Morris came in when the Falcons were 0-5 after Dan Quinn got them off to a great start. And then since then, they've gone four and two, including the win that I just mentioned before on Sunday. Their only two losses have come to the Saints, which is fair, great team, and the Lions, the game where Gurley fell into the end zone oh. and they lost by one point. So they are basically a minute away from being five and one over their last six. 
Uh, they do have a very tough run home. The, they play the Saints, the Chiefs, and the Bucks twice. So yeah. I think they've got the hardest schedule remaining out of the whole competition. But I think going into next year, I think we've got to remember this six year stretch, uh, this six week stretch after Dan Quinn came. Because I don't think their record's going to look too good at the end of the year. They're only sitting at four wins right now. And they're going to be lucky to scrape more than one win going forward. But I think we do have to remember this impressive six-week stretch when we consider next year because they've actually been pretty surprising. Uh, they held the Raiders to six points and their defense has actually started to become pretty good. They're known to be one of the worst secondaries in the league, but overall their pass defense is starting to turn, turn it around. They are now in the top 10 since the start of November um, in terms of pass defense. So they've gone from, I think, since the start of October, they were third worst. But if you take out October, they're actually in the top half, in the top 10 even. And in that time, they have averaged the fifth least points conceded in the whole league, um, assuming the Ravens um, don't concede like a bulk amount of points to the Steelers or something. So, yeah. And then on terms of in terms of offense, they put up 43 points without over-relying on the passing game, which is usually something if you if, – as we were talking about the other day, if we woke up to the 43 and six score line. We're expecting 400 yards from Matt Ryan and yeah. three, ca- three um, touchdowns from Calvin Ridley, but they really shared it around this week. Um, they had 125 yards on the ground and that was with, without Todd Gurley. So that's maybe something to look at going forward. And Ryan only got sacked once, which was um, pretty impressive given that he's been sacked 27 times over the previous 10 weeks and their O-line has been struggling. So it looks like they're starting to turn it around in all aspects of their game. Julio was missing as well as Todd Gurley and Matt Ryan isn't playing the greatest football of his career. So uh, I don't think it's all bad signs in Atlanta. Um, Yeah, do you're a big Atlanta fan. Do you think they're a chance to bounce back next year or do you think it's time um, to rebuild, maybe get rid of Matt Ryan, bring in a new quarterback, or what do you reckon? Yeah, it's a tough one because um, coming into this year, they sort of did a similar thing last year for the second half where they yeah, went on a bit actually. of a run yeah. and then people were pretty high on them at the start of this year when they went 0-5 to start off the year. But um, there's, all, there's always been potential there. Like They have an elite offense on paper. Um. And it's mainly been their defense. But I mean, if they can sort out their defense, they might be a sniff next year. Yeah, I, I agree. I probably wouldn't get rid of Matt Ryan. There's like rumors of him. Well, not really rumors, but people were saying like maybe Chicago should have a crack at him or something like that. But I think he should stay because although they have a great team on paper, like it's not necessarily a young team. Yeah. Um, and Julio, Julio, I'm worried about Julio. His hamstring just keeps playing up. Every two weeks, he's getting pretty. He's getting pretty old now, so his his days might be numbered. Yeah, and if they continue to strengthen that defense, if they can get one or two more years out of this offense, and maybe add a few pieces to the O line, they could yeah. bounce back next year in in, ser- in a serious way, and all of a sudden be playoff contenders yet again, despite yeah. being in a pretty tough division. But yeah, I reckon things are on the up in Atlanta, and then on the other side of that coin. We had the LV Raiders. I almost said the LA Raiders. Um, they had an absolute shocker, didn't they? Like, yeah. I'm not really. I wasn't really copping this result when I woke up. Derek Carr. Oh. Had, Derek Carr had four turnovers, and Jacobs pitched him with one. Thought he would chop out for the boys. Um, and yeah, I I thought this was an absolute gimme for the Raiders. Um, Same. I think we the thing we talked about it last week is one of our yeah. sure bets of the week, but. They've still got an easy remaining schedule. I think it's the easiest in the competition next to the Browns or maybe the Browns are the 31st and they're the easiest. But given the fact that they were pretty high after a, a great shootout with the Chiefs, it's pretty disheartening to come out and get absolutely smacked by a pretty poor, like I know we've just been gassing them up, but a team that was capable of an 0-5 start. Um, yeah. And yeah, five turnovers, not on. It's... Derek Carr, you expect him to be a safe, secure quarterback, and that's not good enough from him. They are still well and truly in the wild card mix, but with the Bills, Browns, Dolphins, and Titans all getting up on the weekend, I think it was a pretty horrible week for the Raiders. Um, so, yeah, not too yeah, happy. I, I couldn't believe that result because last week 
Derek Carr looked beast against the Chiefs, uh, and they almost got up. So yeah, the the NFL is weird sometimes. Yeah, definitely shock of the week. And then to finish my point on the interim coaches, I'll quickly touch on Houston. Not that much of a winner this week, to be fair. It was a pretty relevant game against the Lions, the early Thanksgiving kickoff. But Romeo Cronell came in to the head coaching role, similar to Raheem Morris. They were 0-4 under Bill O'Brien. Since then, they've gone 4-3. and And their losses have come to the Titans in overtime the Packers and the Browns in that game where no one could throw the ball more than 10 metres. Um, they've had the fifth hardest strength of schedule all year and they beat the Lions in a blowout, as I mentioned, on Thanksgiving. A few late scores also kind of padded the score for the Lions a bit. It was a lot um, of a larger deficit than it looked. But, yeah, their offence is absolutely killing at the moment. Also, Obviously, pretty horrible news not in terms of, like, I feel bad for him, but, like, it's pretty shit to hear that um, Will Fuller was on the juice all season. But um, And I Bradley got... Roby, the oh, best corner. Same, oh, exact same thing, apparently, six weeks. The fellas were not seeing the right people or they were sharing it around in the locker room, who knows. But more importantly, Deshaun Watson is playing pretty beast footy. So, yeah. um, so as long as you've got a quarterback that's top five in the league, you can always play some pretty good football if you can build a good team around him but yeah that's he's not, a good ideal to hear from will fuller and bradley roby so you guys are fuckwits <laughs> do you do you believe that it was their doctor's mistake or do you reckon that's just an excuse everyone makes because that seems to be 80 percent of the doping cases nowadays yeah i don't know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say either way yeah like i can see how it would happen because it's just like you probably wouldn't even think about it really unless it was yeah. like a blatant drug that you were taking but yeah anyway do you have any other winners you want to mention or no i brought two two winners two losers have we touched already already rinsed them already oh, rinsed them. beautiful um all right that, that moves us on to our predicted playoff bracket obviously we do this weekly so we'll be more discussing our changes and why we've made that so if you want to run us through your nfc predictions well Yep. Bracket. Yep. So my NFC, I've had one change. So I've got the Packers one still, the Saints, Seahawks, Giants, and then Buccaneers, Rams, and then in at seven is the 49ers. Yeah, they've same. Re- I've, they've replaced I've the Cardinals. Yeah, I've joined. I reckon that's so, saucy from us. I don't reckon. I think it is pretty extreme extrapolation from one game, but uh, yeah, I'm actually big on the 49ers. I kind of forgot how elite they were. and. Because uh, I had an exam Monday morning, well, Sunday, US time. I didn't watch all of it, but from what I caught, they were looking pretty sexy. So, um, yeah, I forgot how elite Kyle Shanahan offences are. Um, but, yeah. yeah, I've got them in at the seven. I've got them going 10 and six. Um, my only difference to you is I've got the Rams over the Buccaneers um, on head-to-head. And then I've also got the Packers, Saints, and Seahawks, one, two, three. Um, but I've got them all finishing 12 and 4, but the Packers finish above the Saints on head to head, and the Saints finish above the Seahawks on conference record. Um, that was a change from last week. I had the Saints number one. And I've actually, this is bizarre because they lost to the Seahawks. They looked pretty bad, but I've actually got the Eagles as my NFC East winner again. I had the Cowboys last week, got off them a lot this week, and I'm back on the Eagles train. I've got them going six, nine, and one, and the Giants. I've got going six and ten. So I've got that fateful tie against Joe Burrow's Bengals in like week two or whatever it is coming in to save the day. Um, but yeah, I think I there are a couple fifty fifties with the Eagles where I back them to improve, but they haven't yeah. really shown any signs of improvement. So yeah, I, I definitely can see how the Giants are in there for you. Um, Just missing out, I think it's worth mentioning, I've got the Vikings, Bears, and Cardinals all finishing 8-8. and So actually quite far away from the 49ers on 10 wins, but um, they are out of the picture at the moment for me. Um, In terms of the AFC, who are you looking at here? Yeah, my AFC is the exact same as last week. I'll just run through it again. Uh, Chiefs, Steelers, Titans, Bills, and then Ravens 5, Indy 6, Dolphins 7. All right, interesting. I've Very thought, stiff on the Browns, who are eight and three, but 
Yeah. Oh, no, I, I still don't have them in, but it's actually starting to become a bit of a maths problem now. Like, they don't have many more games to win, and then they're actually in there. But Mate, their yeah. fixture must have been so easy this year. How are they? I don't I I Actually, I, I said before that they've got an easy fixture remaining. I think it actually might not be because I've got them going 0 and 5. <laughs> Yeah, the they've, the still got, they've got the Ravens and Steelers to go. Yeah, I think it. it was easy like a month ago. That yeah. I think that was stuck in my head. Um, yeah. But yeah. So mine is I've still got the Steelers number one. Don't see them losing a game, but I could be jinxing tomorrow's match. Um, then I've got the Chiefs too. Once again, I've got them winning out. Then I've got the Titans in the, the third seed. I've got them now pipping the Colts as I had the Colts winning that last week. I've got the Titans going 13-3. and three. Then I've got the Bills, the number four seed, 11 and five. I've got the Ravens, the number five seed. I've got them finishing above the Colts on head to head, both going 11 and five. And then I've got the Raiders just sneaking in in seventh, pipping the Dolphins, who I have going nine and seven. And then, yeah, as I mentioned, the Browns, I've got them losing five on the trot, and the Patriots are going to end seven and nine. But very close at that for that number seven seed in the AFC. I think the top six, barring. Unless this COVID business with the Ravens keeps continuing, I think the yeah. top six in the AFC is pretty solid. Yeah. Like I don't know what the order will be, but I think those six teams will all make it. But then, out of the Raiders, Dolphins, and Browns, I think it's anyone's game at the moment. They all like are inconsistent as, and yeah, it's just a, a shit shoot really. And yep. that Agreed. team has to that team's going to have to play the Chiefs or the Steelers. So. But I don't, I don't know. The Raiders have challenged the Chiefs twice this year, so maybe they, on their day they could put up a fight. All right, offensive players of the week, mate. Who are you going? Who are you going with here? Right, bronze medal this week. Your man Deshaun Watson put on an absolute clinic. It was against the Lions, but his stats were just insane. Um, three hundred yards, three touchdowns, and a rushing touchdown, I believe. Um, yeah, Fuller and Cooks balled out, but yeah, put on a clinic. The boys. Should I go? Are we going rotating or? Oh yeah, right. That's, just actually, that's great in, ingenuity from you. My bronze medal. I'm giving <laughs> it to Antonio Gibson of the Washington Football Team. He went 136 yards from scrimmage against Dallas on Thanksgiving, but more importantly, had three touchdowns, and he was the main. Last time they dominated the Cowboys on the ground, it was more of a team effort from Barber, McKissick and him. And this yeah. time he took over and announced himself on the national stage, which Washington aren't often able to do. So he is my bronze medalist. Congrats, Antonio. He, was, he narrowly missed out for me. He was one of two honourable mentions. Um, silver medal, Derek Henry. I think we... Yeah, he's my silver yeah. medalist. We'll, we'll have the same silver and gold. But, yeah, absolutely tore up the Colts, who are meant to be one of the best run defences in the league. I think they've been a bit off recently, but that's probably because they've played Henry twice in the last three weeks. But, yeah, 170 yards, three touchdowns. Can't really ask for much more. Yeah, he's an absolute mad dog. And then, obviously, the gold medalist, um, Tyreek Hill, one of the best games Insane. I've seen. One of the best games I've ever seen in my recent history as an NFL fan. 269 yards from scrimmage, three touchdowns. I think he had over 200 yards in the first quarter. Is yeah, that... and two touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I turned it on because I had my exam at 10 a.m. Australian time. I yeah. turned it on at 8.30. It was quarter time, and like I didn't know this, uh, the stats or anything. And they just go through his highlights and there's just like one massive bomb. And I'm like, okay. And there's like another. And I'm like, <laughs> actually, he's had a pretty good quarter here. And there was like three more. I was like, what the hell has happened to you? And then they show right. his stat line and I was just like, fair enough. He was on 40 fantasy points at quarter time. Yeah, Didn't, could not believe it. Could not believe like it. it just shows that speed in sport, not even just NFL, speed in sport <laughs> is the most overpowered thing. Because he's obviously a very skillful bloke if he's dominating at the NFL level. But, um, yeah, you honestly cannot guard him. And I think the Bucks secondary has been showing up uh, a few times this year. Um, it's looking yeah. a little bit shaky every now and then. But, yeah, not they got, from them. They got wrecked but, by um, the Rams wideouts last week as well. Yeah, so their corners who came out of the gates the season flying have kind of slowed down a bit but fair enough when you've got a bloke who's that as fast as Tyreek Hill um honorable mentions 
obviously Deshaun Watson, you had him as your bronze medalist. Don't need to talk about him. Nick Chubb also had a pretty good game against the Jags. Yeah. Latavius Murray, um, he's kind of taken over in terms of the ground game in over Alvin Kamara, which is interesting. And then obviously don't really want to get him random this week, but just statistically, Will Fuller also had a good game. But yeah, we all, we all know why he played well. Um, offensive rookie of the week, obviously mine kind of gave it away given the fact that I gave him the bronze medal, but Antonio Gibson, um, I actually always forget he's a rookie to be honest, but it's same with James Robinson. I always just forget they're rookies, but yeah. He's that my offensive in college. Rookie, but... <laughs> Good. Well, it's not like I'll watch college football yet, but yeah, they weren't high picks, but yeah, he was my offensive rookie of the week. Don't really need to go through why I've already mentioned. Is he your offensive rookie of the week? Or... No, I've actually snubbed him. Um, <laughs> of... There's actually, there's two other men, Justin Jefferson. Oh, yeah, Justin Jefferson. Great game. Yeah. Snubbed him as well, though. Gave it to my boy, James Robinson. Oh, you are that biased to your fantasy players. It's a joke. Here's the thing, though, mate. Got to take into account opposition and match impact. Gibbo's two touchdowns were right at the end, junk time. Uh, Robinson played the Browns. Yeah, he played in a loss. He played in a loss. Played in a loss, but like he's. Pro- I don't think he's ever played in a win, except for week <laughs> one against Indy. But Brown's very good run defense, and he tore them to shreds, 130 yards and a touchdown. So I will admit it twice, though, because he's on my fantasy team. Again, uh, so Gibson was my man. Honorable mentions, as you mentioned, Justin Jefferson had a great game against the Panthers with Thielen missing. Robinson, as you awarded just then, had a pretty good one. And then Cam Akers and Colin Johnson both had semi-breakout games, respectively. Who's so Colin Johnson? <laughs> he's, he's a Jags receiver. He, um, Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure he called like an 80-yard touchdown or something like that. Um, but, yeah, not 100% oh, yeah. sure. Don't know too much about him. And then Defensive Player of the Week, I'll just quickly go through who I've got here. Um, like a bit of a dog act, just going for the bloke who scored points on defense because that's not really what they're there for. But hard to ignore the fact that he had – Two fumble return touchdowns in the space of five seconds. Insane. It is Jeremy Chin, the rookie safety from the Panthers. He forced one of them himself. The other one he picked up in like a pack. He also had 13 tackles, one quarterback hit, and was almost a huge reason why the Panthers um, snuck a cheeky victory over the Vikings. They just missed out, sadly. But um, he, he gave it his best shot, scoring over half their points. So fair play, Mr. Chin. All right, that leaves us to our week 13 preview. This this part, week after week, has gone from just picking head-to-head who we got in this one to it's become pretty sophisticated and it's become my favourite part of the episode. But we are into our game picks for week 13. Sure, bet of the week. So this is not really like bet makes it sound like it's betting. But out of all the head-to-head matchups, if you had to place money on one of them, who are you going with this week? Yep, so this one was a pretty obvious one. In fact, there were a few obvious ones this week, but I've gone for the Dolphins over the Bengals. Um, cannot see the Bengals winning that match without Joe Burrow. I think it's as sure as you'll see. Yeah, fair Especially enough. Especially if Fitzos Fitzgerald is under centre. Yeah, I feel bad. This segment's probably going to be the opponent of the Jets and the Bengals every week, but... I have once again gone for the opponent of the Jets like I did last week. It's boring. It's it's soft, but it worked for me last week. And I think the Raiders are going to bounce back from their horrible loss to the Falcons. And I think they're going to put up quite a few points against the Jets. Uh, the Raiders got destroyed, obviously, last week. And I'm not sure if Josh Jacobs is playing or not at this point. It's looking unlikely, apparently. Uh, but the Raiders actually are a top-half defense on the ground and in the air. So I don't think the Jets are going to be putting up many points against them. And the Raiders are up against, in the Jets, the third worst pass defense since the start of November. So I reckon Derek Carr will have a a huge bounce back game. And I reckon they'll carve them up similar to what the Dolphins did last week in a bounce back game. So sadly for the Jets, they keep getting these teams who are angry about last week's performance and looking to make a statement, but don't think it would really matter who they'd be playing. But Actually, a big couple of weeks for Sam Darnold if I'm going to not trash out the Jets because obviously they're going to get the number one pick at this stage and they're probably going to draft Trevor Lawrence. Like You're not going to pass up the option to draft yeah. one of the best college quarterbacks of all time. But yeah, if he, he's going to... 
probably have a few suitors out there, so it's important few weeks for him to show some potential if he wants to be a starting quarterback next year. Otherwise, he's going to have to probably settle for being a bench warmer. So, yeah, I reckon a big couple of weeks for him. Upset of the week, mate. Who have you got here? Yep, so this was out of two for me, and uh, but I've gone with um the Niners to beat yeah, the Bills. Yeah, baby. We are hardcore on the Niners train. Choo-choo. It's in San Fran. I'm 99% it's, sure. Well, I'm just gonna it's it's their home game, but they're playing in Arizona. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because Shit. of the Santa Clara County rules. <laughs> that might change it, but no, I'll back it in. Surely I'll not. Back in the, um, I'll back in the Niners. I reckon yeah, they'll be. I reckon they will get up. Yeah, they are the slight underdog in terms of the bookmakers. They were paying $2.15 in Australian odds when I looked last night. Um, but, yeah, they showed great oh, signs against the Rams. Out. Oh, really? It was 2.30 when I just checked before. Oh, really? And I saw the line was, like, going out as well. So everyone's kind of on the bills, which is interesting. But they're also, on top of the blokes they got last week, they're also probably going to get Brandon Ayuk back this week. D Ford is also a chance to come back from his long layoff, one of the best um, pass rushes going around. And the Bills actually have been really bad against the run since the start of November, second worst in the league. So I can imagine Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson will be carving them up and Nick Mullins will probably once again steer the ship pretty nicely. So, uh, yeah, I'm actually backing in the Niners kind of hard here, but the Bills have been unpredictable and they did have six, well, not success. They got Hail Mary, but they had a pretty good game in the same building the other week. So we'll see how they go. But, yeah, I like us. I like our bet there. I'm backing the Niners hard. All right, game spread. Which game spreads are you interested in here? Yep, so I've got an absolute lock first up, and that's the Detroit Lions plus three against the Bears. The Bears suck. I think they're on a six. You're a joke, mate. mate. They're on a six-game losing streak, and Matt Patricia's gone. Interim head coach. We all know the theory. When a team gets gets in a new coach, they bum. So true. I'm backing that in, and they have they have a field goal leeway. The Bears the Bears aren't going to blow them out. It's going to be a close game. So back Man, up. Trubisky, Trubisky has a lot higher scoring potential than Foles. I will say that much. But I, I have to say, like, I, I think it's a good value bet from you. Uh, the Bears are in pretty bad form, but we do overrate the Lions. <laughs> like, <laughs> you love oh, yeah, them. I, I think I, it's corrupted I, me. I think it's corrupted me. Like, because that was, that was my upset of the week last week and they got absolutely trounced. But yeah, I think it's a chance the Bears are playing pretty well. Another awesome. thing to mention. Um, Golladay should be back this week, which will help out yeah. the offense a lot. And Swift as well. And yeah. Swift, very true. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what's your other one? You wanna? Um, is, that, is that your only one? No, I got three. Are we rotating or should I? Oh just yeah, pump right. them all sure, out? sure. Um, well, I have first of all before I get into my actual ones, I've got the 49ers plus two point five. As we mentioned, we think they're going to win, and yep. to win by less than that would be pretty rare. And I'm actually doubling down and i'm saying the raiders at seven and a half under like minus 7.5 is actually a pretty good chance i reckon yeah they'll beat the jets by quite a margin but my first other game spread is i've actually mine are both similar style i've got a bad team likely to lose but i reckon they won't be losing by that much i went with this logic last week went one from two with it in terms of the 49ers and the bears but the jags up against the vikings when I checked, the Jags were at plus 9.5, and the Jags have actually been losing a lot of close games in the last five weeks, even against like the Packers and stuff. It's all been three points, four points, five points, two-point losses. And once again on the weekend, everyone was saying the Browns were going to blow them out of the water. They only lost by two points. So I reckon the Jags just are made of that hard stuff, and they don't get blown out. The Vikings are kind of the opposite. They win really small games. So I reckon, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Unless Dalvin Cook has an absolute field day like he was six weeks ago, I think the Jags losing is still definitely probable. But by that much, I'm not, I don't see that happening, to be honest. So I, I reckon the Jags at plus 9.5 is pretty solid. Yeah, I saw that one. Did not, didn't mind it at all. Um, I've got a similar one, and that's you'll hate this, but 
The New York Giants yeah, in, that's in Seattle. I'm, I'm, um, I'm on it, baby. You're on it? Yeah, plus plus yeah. 10 at the moment when I just checked before. Ooh. Um, it's gone look, out. Danny Dimes probably isn't playing. It looks like a nasty matchup, but the Giants have rarely, if at all, been blown out this season. They've had about four losses by under three points, and they've got a very underrated defense. So I back them to keep it within 10. Yeah, and, and the um, Seahawks, we see them as like this offensive machine, but the last two weeks, yeah. they haven't scored. They scored. They beat the Cardinals by seven, and they beat the Eagles by like six or something. Did you hear about the Eagles spread? Nah. Oh yeah, yeah, they yeah. Were, yeah it was six they were at plus six point five. Yeah, <laughs> and they went for the two point conversion on that hail mary touchdown, and it, the margin went to six. Yeah, there so was so everyone, many, everyone was fuming on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty funny, but um, I saw that on a talk show. Mate, that Hail yeah. Mary was AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually a good catch, like reflex, yeah. but yeah, it was pretty it's dodgy bad. how it happened. Yeah, it was funny. But yeah, I've, I've got New York as well. I had them at plus 9.5, but plus 10. Shut your lips. Yeah. And I think um, <laughs> um, if if Danny Dimes gets ruled out, I reckon it will come out even further to me, like plus 12 even. So Would that, would that make you reconsider though? or? No, I'll be on, on it either way. Back in the defense. I can't lie. I actually don't know who the Giants' backup is. but It's, it's some bloke called Colt McCoy. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He played on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He played a few games for Washington last year, I think. Um, but not 100% sure on that one. All right. Do you have any others you want to mention? Because that's all my game spreads done. I actually find yeah. it really hard to predict because it's so unpredictable this year. I don't really yeah. want to hedge my bets on any. But yeah, uh, so I've got another one here. Saints minus three over the Falcons. Um, they which dust- way are you going? Oh, Saints. Saints. Yeah. Okay. Minus three. They dusted them up two weeks ago, and I backed them in to do it again. Don't think I don't think Julio is going to play. Um, think his hammy is pretty dodgy and that they should rest him until he comes back. But, yeah, the Saints are just a much better team, way better defense. And even with Taysom Hill, I backed them in to get the job done. Yeah, even though I was gassing them up before and they did score 43 points on the weekend, the the um, the Falcons' offense isn't necessarily flying, especially in terms of the passing game. Matt Ryan's had a couple pretty average games in a row. And yeah. this Saints defense is a whole nother kettle of fish to the Raiders defense. They are the best in terms of run, pass, and points against since the start of November. So Jeez, that's yeah. nasty. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one for them. Um, they they are in good form though. Obviously, coming off a huge win, but yeah, I like that Saints one there for sure. Um, all right, now I've, I'll get you to do the remaining head to heads that we haven't really discussed, and then following that, I'll get you to do some stat predictions. Who's gonna? get more Tully, yards and stuff Tully. like that. Um, all right, I'm just scanning through which ones we haven't talked about. All right, Colts versus Texans. Colts versus Texans. Um, do you think I, the yeah, Texans no. are a chance in this one, by the way? Or do you think Will Fuller and Bradley Road being out is probably going to like rock the team? Yeah, that's pretty tough. I'd, nah, I'd, I'll take the Colts. All right. And this yeah. is just head-to-head, head, right? Yeah, yeah, just head-to-head. Yeah, head. Colts. Browns versus Titans. Oh, Browns are heavy underdogs, aren't they? I'm pretty sure they were like three dollars fifty, which is actually saucy. But um, I'll take the Titans. Uh, Patriots charges. This was this is a flip. Oh yeah, they were neck and neck. They were like a dollar ninety each. Um, yeah. pretty sure it's in the charges at the charges. Um, the thing is, charges just don't know how to win. But yeah. I'm going charges. Yeah, fair enough. The Patriots did lose the week after that Ravens win, I'm pretty sure. Um, Broncos, Chiefs. Chiefs. <laughs> Mate, the line in that one was like 15. Yeah. I was tempted to add that, but I was like, no, nah, I can't trust the Broncos at the moment. Um, obviously, we don't know what's happening with the Ravens-Steelers game, but just based yeah. on general form, Cowboys-Ravens. Are you still backing in the Ravens? Yeah, that's on Wednesday, um, Tuesday night, right? Yeah. Yeah, then, they, they should uh, have all their players back. Yeah, and then this one's Monday night, the Washington football team against the Steelers. He's thinking about it. Interesting. Oh, no, I'll go the Steelers, but I'm actually going to put that on upset watch. So next yeah, week. I, they... I'm putting the Texans Colts on upset watch, but the Colts will probably bounce back and smack them now. Oh, Lions, Bears, we talked about Saints, Falcon. All right, Rams, Cardinals. Oh, that's hard. 
Uh, no, nah, I'm not trusting Kyle Murray's shoulder, so I'll go the Rams. Yeah, and then easy to dust off. This is probably an easy one for you, but Eagles Packers. Yeah, Packers. Yeah, Packers. Right. Aaron Jones five touchdowns in that one. Looking all right. Out. Once again, some absolute <laughs> bias towards your players, but we love to see it. All right, stat predictions time. These are players playing in the same match, and I'm going to give you a category, and you get to choose who's going to do better in that category. Passing yards, Rivers versus Watson. Watson. All right, interesting. Murray versus Goff. Ooh, that's hard. Goff, yeah. Goff either goes 100 or 400. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'll go Kyler. All right, Next rushing time. yards, Nick Chubb and Cream Hunt combined, or Derrick Henry? Oh, um, Chubb and Hunt. I actually, right. I reckon Chubb is the best running back in the comp, but that's a different different topic. You do froth the Chubb. Um, Dalvin Cook versus James Robinson. Rushing yards? Yeah. Dalvin. Hurts with Dalvin. DeAndre Swift that's versus all, you know. David Montgomery. <laughs> Swift. What do you what do you reckon about that one? Well, Montgomery's guaranteed more rushes and true. Lions are a worse defense, but That's true. Swift is way better. So it is tough. Rushing yards alone, I'd probably back Monty. I don't know. Uh, I'd also like to think the Bears, the game script will suit Monty, but we don't know. But yeah, I'd probably go to Monty just, but very close. Um, receptions, who will have the most receptions? This is Michael Thomas and Calvin Ridley. Um, oh. I don't know how you want to take Julio Jones playing or not. Yeah. Pick either side. Um, nah, Thomas, because it's the Falcons. <laughs> yeah, that, and he, 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 yeah, I'm pretty sure he had nine receptions against them two weeks ago. So I'll go with Thomas. All right, who's going to score more points? The Steelers against Washington or the Chiefs against the Broncos? Wait, total match points or like just the nah, Steelers? The, the, those Chiefs. teams point. Yeah, Steelers and Chiefs. Chiefs. All right, interesting. And then finally, who is going to give away more more footy? Who's going to have more turnovers? The Bills or the Forty ers Oh, they, they're it's playing each other. Um, yeah, it's pretty random. Ooh. Pretty random category, to be honest. But Derek Carr's inspired me. I feel like I feel like Josh Allen doesn't actually throw that many picks. Could be yeah. wrong on that. Um, I'm going to go with the Niners. Back Mullins right. to throw a couple of picks. All right, love to see it. Even though um, has been low key shit this season. Speaking of Mullins, if if this. 49ers have a good couple weeks. Garoppolo is scheduled to come back like week 13 or 14. Say Mullins plays 12 and 13. In, uh, no, this is week 13. Say he plays well this week Yeah. and Garoppolo comes back the next week. Are you benching Mullins? Yeah, that's actually you? juicy. Because I reckon that's a genuine. After a big week for the 49ers, if they come out this week, upset the Bills, like I think it'd be pretty hard to bench Mullins personally. Yeah, I actually they do. I, they do love Jimmy G. So. Yeah, well, I think I don't think they should, but I think they will. I think yeah, they'll bring I, back Jimmy. Yeah, I agree with you there. Um, so that's all we've got for you today. Really enjoyed this episode. Actually, loved that last section as I always do. Thanks for joining me, Pilch. No worries, mate. And it's thanks for pleasure. listening. If you've enjoyed us, go check out our previous content and stay tuned for tomorrow's episode. We'll be back at you with a week 13 fantasy preview. Thank you.